right in with my favorite thing in the whole wide world, Python. Obviously, you guys know I love Python. For me, it's just such an easy way to get in and dig through stuff. And there's a lot of cute little things that you can do with Python. And, and um, I really think it's kind of the next logical step up. Once you've been doing all that sed and awk and grep and cat stuff, you know, you do that for a little while. And then I think you kind of want to take that next step and start writing little command line log parsers, little Python scripts to deal with your log files. And that's what we want to do right now. Okay, so we're going to deal with a real quick log file, and we're going to start seeing if we can deal with uh, data structures, right? So I think the biggest thing that you're going to want to be able to deal with in Python is something called a list. A list, is, in most programming languages, you would probably call it an array. An array is just a container, right? So you have a container where you put stuff in it. Let's say it's like your lunchbox and you have your, your chips, your drink, your sandwich. You have your lunchbox and you say, hey, give me number one and you're talking about your chips. Give me number two out of my lunchbox and you're talking about your drink. Give me number three out of my lunchbox and you're talking about sandwich. Well, that's what a list is doing. So you read all of your data into a list and then those items in that list, you can say, hey, give me number one, give me number two, give me number three. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll start by w getting down a log file. Then you'll just type the word Python. We're going to create this object. So we'll just say, oh, we'll create a variable f. We'll open this log file. We'll open it with the dash r for read. And then we're going to create uh, the object lines. And we'll say, OK, I want to go f.readlines equals lines. So I can print lines. and then um, with this, I can iterate through it, right? So line zero, lines 10, lines 50, and it snatches up all the lines for me. Let's try it. Okay. All right, so you're at your Linux command prompt, and what you want to do is you just want to type the word Python. So when you are when you just type Python, you see how you get these three arrows, these three greater than signs right here? That's what it's showing you right here. Now, whenever you want to clear your screen in Python, hit Control L, as in Lincoln, Control L, and it clears my screen. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to print one. And I can print anything, right? And print two, print 200, right? Well, it's not a problem until I want to say that I want to print hello, right? And you guys see that it blows up. And it blows up because one is an integer. And hello is a string. So as long as you're dealing with numbers, you can pretty much just talk to Python and say, hey, I'm dealing with numbers. Whenever I'm dealing with string, a block of text, you probably want to put it in quotes like this. So remember that rule. Remember that rule. Whenever we're dealing with numbers, leave numbers as is. Whenever we're dealing with words, put words in quotes. Those words, we call them strings. Those numbers, we call them integers. So let's just do some real quick math. Two plus two is four. Six minus three, right? 18 divided by seven. Now, did you guys notice 18 divided by seven, let's see, two times seven is 14. So there's, there's a remainder of four. So it just gave me the whole number. Well, what Python is saying is, Whenever I'm dealing with whole numbers, give you back whole numbers. If I want to deal with numbers that have a decimal point, he'll always answer you back with numbers that have a decimal point. We call those floats. Now, if you want that remainder, remember how before we were dealing with the remainder of something? So if I go, hey, 18 divided by 7 is 2 but it should have a remainder of four. What you would do is you would change that into a percent sign and it will give you that remainder. We call that modulus. So you want to divide this by this. So divide 18 by seven, but give me the remainder of it. That's modulus. So if you do nine modulus four, your remainder is one. Okay.
other math stuff that you can do, let's say I do 6, 6 point times 7. Well, because any number has a decimal point in it, he's always going to answer with decimals, right? And if the numbers don't have decimal points, he'll answer without it. Now, you can go 6 times 6 times 6, right? 6 to the third, or you can 6 star star 6, 6 to the third, right? And you can handle negative numbers that way as well, right? So you can negative 5, right, to the fourth power. All right. Next lesson, variables. Control-L is how I clear my screen. A variable is just I want to assign a number or a value to something. So in this case, I'm saying X, right? So x equals 18. When I print out x, he goes, okay, x is 18. Well, now I can work with that variable x plus 15. So 18 plus 15, that gives me uh, 33. Now I can say x to the third power, what I showed you earlier, right? Now, what if I said y equals 54? Now I can go x plus y, okay? Now, if you want to take in a number, right, let's say I want to take in my age, and I'm going to input like this, so now it'll take in my age, okay? Now I can say my age, and my age is 40, right? My age plus, you know, 21, right? And then you can also do your age to the third, okay? Now, you need to remember, that's a whole number. If I want to do the same thing and take in my name, you can't do it with input. Okay, I put in Joe, it's going to blow up. The reason is because input is for integers. Raw input is how you'll do numbers. So. If I want to take in your first name, it's going to be raw underscore input. Right now it took it. Okay? So you got to remember that whenever you're dealing with strings, the strings are always either going to be in quotes and you have to know that you're talking about strings. So this is one of those things that kind of messes people up when you first start getting started with Python. How do we deal with strings? How do we deal with integers? And it's usually when you start intermingling the two that stuff starts to blow up. 99 times out of 100 when I see beginners, that's the stuff that they mess up with, right? Improper use of quotes, right? Do I use a single quote here? Do I use a double quote here? Or intermingling numbers and strings, right? So if A equals 10 and B equals uh, 40, you can do A plus B. But if A equals Joe, right, and B equals 10, you cannot do A plus B, right? You can't just say, hey, if I've got a string and an integer, let me combine them together, right? You can't do that. But what you can do is you can say, you know, A equals Joe and B equals McCray, right? Now you can A plus B, right? Because the data types are the same, right? You can combine the two data types if the data types are the same, but you can't intermingle strings and numbers. So you got to get used to that early. If you can get used to that early, dealing with stuff in Python, you know, dealing with data isn't that bad. I can help you learn about who we are and hopefully if you're willing to join us. This is InfoSec Addicts.